phones, they're listening quietly, they have their popcorn. But either way, if you would like OGS Inca to win, give a cheer for Inca. And if you'd like OGS Top to win, make some noise for Top. And if you're just a general fan of eSports, give a cheer for the cross map positions. Looks like, looks like we are in store for a nice, long, juicy match. In the south position is OGS Top as the Blue Terran. And in the top, we have Inca playing on the Little Ones account as the Red Protoss. A lot of people have been discussing about how these guys met. Uh, and unfortunately for Inca, he did drop a game against Tyler in the group stages, which made him second in his group and had to go against OGS Top, obviously being first in his group. Uh, so both players having to come against each other, I'm pretty sure that's not what they wanted to happen. But because Tyler's so good, he managed to take out Inca and throw him down to second place. So they are going to have to fight out against each other. A lot of people kind of said that these guys would meet in the final. But that's uh -huh. not how it worked out today. Yeah, you know, that's always such a hard path to go down to try to just think, yeah, I might be the first or second best player in the tournament. I'm either going to get first or second, but then you get paired against not only one of the best in the world, but your teammate right when you hit the round of 16. But of course, that is the way tournaments happen. Neither player is any stranger to that sort of environment. Either way, we do have Terran throwing down a barracks at the front of his base and a gateway going down for Inca, touching his main nexus. And both these players, I'm pretty sure they're going to know everything of everything of everything about each other because they live together. They, they, you can say they sleep together. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is something that you could conclude from seeing a Terran versus Protoss on you this map. You could say that. You could say that. So these guys are going to know everything about each other. Styles, everything. It's going to be interesting to see how they do play this. Are they going to play mind games with each other or just play a straight out game? Just to remind people, this is also a best of three. We are in the best of three yeah, format yeah. now also. Looks like the two workers will end up passing by each other with the classic high five heading down to the southward areas. Now, very curious to see if we are going to see the extremely fast second barracks before the supply depot. More recently, in the last several weeks, players have been favoring getting that factory up. A great indicator of whether the fast barracks is up is whether the supply depot is coming out quickly or not. And as we see, there is the depot down. So that's going to be a pretty big indicator to Inca. He will be forced to retreat, but still getting some pretty vital information and barely escaping with his life. Yeah, barely escaping. 100 gas has, well, has been there for... Uh, top now will he be putting down the factory though? It's a little bit delayed as you said because he did get that supply depot Is it gonna be put down? No, he's deciding to go for the tech lab. Wow, probably a Reaper I suppose is probably the best uh, response here Wouldn't be surprised to see him do some sort of funky early expand just throw down the command center and get two Marauders concussive shell play defensively He's scouted into Inca's base. He sees that stalker is coming up He does see that the cybernetics core is researching the warp gate upgrade and Curious to see if he's going to be going for some sort of fast expand. That would definitely help out in these cross map positions. Ooh, but he is as well. You called it day nine. You're so good. Did I now? Oh, oh down did here. <laughs> oh, I yeah, like, I called that one. What is it that I called this? You totally, absolutely, no <laughs> doubt, Mr. Apollo. So he has got the fast expand. Uh, this is uh, where is the Reaper? I'm sure he had one. No, he doesn't actually have one. He's gone straight for uh, a Marauder. Actually, I thought he would have gone for the Reaper. He's going for the Marauder uh, with the shells, and he's got to be careful. The stalk is coming down. Will be able to pick off this SCV. SCV running around, uh, and now he's going to have to retreat with the Marines. Marauder is out, though, which might be able to snipe this at the same time, though, Day 9. What are you looking at? I'm looking at a Stargate. <laughs> a Stargate, and now this will definitely put a huge amount of pressure into this early expand build. We see only now is the second barracks getting thrown down by OGS top. We do see that concussive shell down. Just rallying units to this Zell Naga watchtower, but of course, we saw Sake completely dismantle Nama when they played against one another just by getting faster void rays. There, the concussive shell is finished, and wow, combat shield before Stim. A very interesting choice. Looks like he's going to be favoring a very big marine heavy build. That's actually kind of interesting. He's chosen survivability over getting Stim, which is very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure what the decision was for that is. Um, I'm also intrigued to see why this probe is here in the left-hand side. If he's going to try to uh, build a pylon and warp into the base while he has the Void Ray there, that's going to be interesting to see what he does with that. Would not be surprised to see him throw down a pylon, try to charge that Void Ray up, even reinforce yet more. There is, uh, looks like an inward rally. Interesting. Looks like he might even be saving up for more Void Rays. There are the three warp gates getting thrown down as well. Might even be going for that very obnoxious... Two Void Ray, Mass Stalker push, extremely difficult to deal with, but wow, double reactor going down 
for OGS top. Now that is the sort of opening that is very risky because of the fact that the reactors take so long to construct. And it even looks like uh, he might even be trying to pick off these destructible rocks. No, just trying to scout any possible thing coming out. But little does he know, he is under a lot of pressure. Wow, three void rays en route. And a fourth barracks being put down now as well, day nine. Uh, Marines are going to be starting to throw out now. We do see four Marines in production, but here come the two Void Rays. And another pylon has been put down here, the second pylon. And it looks like the Void Rays will be used to give sight range into the base, and then units will start to be warped in. And we'll have to see how Top helps defend against this. Still no stim has been researched yet. He has to rely on the strength of these Marines. It looks like there's the stim going down right now. Oh, getting a little bit supply blocked, having to construct the double supply depot. Not a position you want to be in. And there's the Zealots getting warped into the high ground. Very, very nice play, but is not moving in yet. Does he even see the Zealots? No! No, it is just outside of the sight range of that barracks. And all the four, a second bunker down on the natural, not expecting this. Oh, he doesn't move around. He sees the pile on, and now he must know something's going on and moves all his units back into the base. And a factory being put down, another tech lab and engineering bay. And here come all the units. They see it. They're trying to take uh -oh. down the pile, but in come the warped units. There's a bunch of zealots and void rays trying to push back this group of marines and marauders. Inca, with this very nice tactical play, is going to have to be some extremely nice control. And that's exactly what he's going to deliver. Doing a great job kiting these zealots. Only a few left remaining. But there's a very nice force field cutting the units in off half from the remainder of the buildings up on the high ground. And these three void rays are very close to getting fully charged. And oh, doesn't manage to pick off that last void ray. More units getting warped in, and Top is in a world of trouble. And he could go for He's got to kill these Marines. Once the Marines go down, he's got to be all oh, no! loses one. But if he manages to get this tech lab down, it will cancel Stim. I'm not sure if he realizes that. He is focusing down the reactor as well. And uh, an OGS Inca doing a lot of pressure. All the SUVs have been pulled as well. Looks like he is trying to do as much distraction as possible, trying to pick off these gateway units. He just desperately needs Stim to finish. If he can get that Stim up in time, he might have enough momentum to swing back around. But more Zealots, more sentries being warped into the high ground, more Marines falling. It looks like these Void Rays are continuing to be constructed as well back in the main. Almost nothing for Inca, just committing everything to this attack. Oh yeah, and it looks like OGS Top is in a world of trouble now. OGS. Uh, Inca is just dominating this game. Great micro with the Void Rays, keeping them alive for so long. And down goes the barracks, and there's not much else he can do. Look at the unit counting station. 14 SCVs to 38 probes. And it looks like Inca is going to take this first and game. And there's the good game. You know, that's really not the style of play that you're seeing from a lot of the Korean players these days. Most of them are favoring a little bit more of the long-term, economically focused. But a lot of Protosses have been having so much trouble with the mid-game against Terran. We're seeing more and more fancy, really, Void Ray plays. And we even got the chance to see Inca do that in the group stages as well. The execution of that build was perfected. He's obviously done that in the...